go day one, go music conference. You know, you have to be heard section waiting to go up. A lot of people around here. Saying. About to get it in, about to get it in. Just waiting patiently, getting rained on, all that. No, 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 let's not say that. <laughs> sprinkling, and sprinkling. Gonna get it in regardless. Put the footage. See y'all in a minute. What up, what up? Just finished my audition. Real short, sweet. Wait around for a couple hours to see if I get that notification to come back for the finale. So we're just gonna be networking in the meantime. You know what I'm saying? We're on deck with the business cards. So we're gonna get it in, man. About 30 years ago, I was sitting in a position that you're sitting in right now with Jack the Rapper in Atlanta. I was a young, hungry artist with a group called No Face, and we were trying to get put on. And I spent a lot of money to go down there. And we drove from New York to Atlanta 14, 15 hours just to be there. So I understand your position. And I understand that you spent your money to be here. So I want to make sure you get something out of this shit. You understand what I'm saying? We are not going to have a panel with a bunch of motherfuckers sitting up here talking about their accolades. Who gives a fuck? What you're here right. for is how you can get down with what you want to accomplish in your life with your brand. And I'll be damned as a moderator if I don't make sure at the 2017... Hey, say that, say that. For giving your music on Spotify, especially if you're an independent artist, you need to get with a distributor or an aggregator um, like Empire, TuneCore, CD Baby, Stem. Make sure you do your research. Hold on, hold on. Slow this shit down. They're right. Sorry. They're right. Tell them again. As an independent <laughs> artist, you need to do your research and choose a distributor. For example, like TuneCore, Stem, CD Baby, and I say do your research so you can see what that service actually provides for you. Um, if there's something that you're lacking on your team, to see if there's anything that that service can help and, and make yourself, you know, yeah. not able to ignore at all. And I think the big thing too is, I mean, like I said, there's very access world. You follow all of us on social media, you can get access now. You can contact people. But at the end of the day, you also got, and as you know, you got to be the hottest in your area, the hottest in your city, the hottest in your block. You know, you have to put stuff up and get those views and impact and sort of build your community from a grassroots level. It still goes that way. It still goes from like a you So, as an NR person, I've assigned T.I., John Legend, um, uh, Work with Usher, uh, Outkast. I mean, listen, I got TLC, like a bunch of stuff, right? But all of them are totally different. Like, I don't have artists that, that I work with. Like, T.I. is nothing like Cap G. But they're all the same in the sense that when they walk in a room, their confidence in who they are doesn't waver. So at that point, it makes it a lot easier to, to target workers for them when you know the person. So it, if the person is... is but they've been stealing our music for a long time. It wasn't just Napster, it wasn't just Casa. And remember when, Dre, you remember this, but hey, remember when we used to sit by the radio and press record and, <laughs> and play? Yeah. 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 See, the problem is I'm 49. And y'all 12 year olds and 20 year olds, you might not understand, we should sit by the radio because our favorite record would come every now and then we had to sit there and go. Wait, you gotta tell them you had to sit there at two in the morning and wait for the Mr. Magic Show. It's the Magic Show, yeah. It's the Magic. But, we, but again, we didn't get, you know, the artists didn't get paid, the critics get paid, the people who made the cassettes got paid. So let's not think that the new technology companies did something that wasn't happening to us before then. You know, they were killing us slowly, but we were doing so well, at that time we really didn't even care. The peer-to-peer -peer technology created became a so critical mass and it all fell apart. You know, these are the three lessons I want you to take away from those times. Number one, never take your eye off of the future. 
You know, people tell you to live in the present. You know, present's not now. <laughs> Next, keep your eye on the future. Number two, always value yourself and your work. We are powerful. It's such number three. Where well, everyone in the room wants to get better compensation for streams, I get it. We make the argument every day. You know, for the first time in a long time, we truly have, I believe, genuine partners in tech. You know, business is not just the, this is, this is Trumpism. Right. Let me tweet something to get you off the issue. Let me not talk about the real issue. Ooh, my father was a veteran. I have police officers in my, in my family. The flag? How, how did the flag become the flag? You want to talk about the Civil War? You want to talk about what we want free? So you, talk, you want to see it talk about kneeling? Kneeling? You mean kneeling? What are we going to talk about? Kneeling? <laughs> kneeling? Is that what we're talking about? So I, I believe our reality is that Colin Kaepernick risked everything. He's unemployed because he took a knee, because of something he believes in. The players wear uniforms. When they take their uniforms all off, they go home to the shit. So why shouldn't they use that platform to have a voice? This is why I love being independent, because I'm gonna say what the fuck I want anytime, any day, and I'm gonna say how I feel about everything. So to me, they should do more than them. How about not playing? Besides that, what's the key to the success of your team? 
Um, I think the first thing is being a good listener. Uh, I think everybody should be a good listener. I think sometimes when you're in the business for an extended period of time and you're dealing with young artists, you tend to feel like you know everything and you never know everything. I'm consistently learning from 20-year-old kids, 19-year-old kids, 18-year-old kids on a day-to-day -day basis. So you have to be open-minded, you have to listen. Um, trust I always bring it to the picture, of course. You have to trust in your partners and in the people that you're working with. You know, as managers, we always, or I always take the approach of saying, I always like to do everything myself because I know it's going to be done right. But in doing that, you spread yourself thin a lot of times. So, of course, you want to, you know, give a little people some duties here and there, make sure everybody handles every job that's given to them, and so on and so forth. So I think that's totally key. Like, totally key. Make sure you, you put your team, <laughs> put your team in order, assign duties to everybody, and trust that they can get the mission accomplished. So you delegate, and I like the delegation. I like that too. And what Sister Hill said is exactly right, but in some cases we just don't know how to do it. What are the ways that we as consumers, either in an independent way or a collective way, engage brands to put pressure on them to know what their consumers want as it relates to the content that they are or are not supporting? Um, I guess for an example, in a situation that we've been dealing with for about the last year and a half. So YG and Nipsey Hussle put out this record called FD, FDT, which is Fuck Donald Trump. You know, this was something, they turned on the television, they're seeing what he is saying about Hispanic America wanting to build a wall. This was before he became president. And they said, you know what, we want to put out this song. And I explained to them what the backlash would cause. You know, companies are going to pull out. People aren't going to sponsor you. Certain things, the pros and cons. And they were okay with that because they wanted to voice their opinion, how they feel, performing it at certain venues. And then it came to a point where venues did not want them. You know, sponsorship dollars and bookings started to stop. And they didn't utilize their Twitter or social media saying, oh, we can't get booked because of this or whatever the case may be. They said, we're still performing our song. This is not about the money. This is about the message. And now it was, you know, he made it his business. The FBI was involved. They um, Pusha T, artist in prison. Woo, <laughs>
before we get started. Yeah. The panel is how to get to the bag, so I put that money grade on, you know? Yeah. You, so we know we don't have a lot of time. So we're gonna jump right into how to get the bag. Tell us about the hustle. What's the mindset that you need to have to get that bag? Mm. You have to be serious. We live in a time where um, I think people don't understand what it really takes to be successful or to be great. And as young men and women, when you're dealing with business, is the mindset that you have to have is, you know, I was, I was a serious child, you know, and I was serious about my dreams. It wasn't a plaything with me as far as what I was dreaming. And, and let me make sure you know, stay close to the money. But um, I'm gonna stand a little bit because I feel more comfortable on the stage. Do your thing, Puff Daddy, do your thing. Yeah, so, so I'm saying the, mind, the mindset that you have to have, you definitely have to be a little crazy. Um, your, 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 your faith and your belief has to be crazy. You have to, you have to see what's not there and manifest it to be in there. Um, but the mindset is that I was a dreamer. I was a dreamer, I started this whole thing as a dream. And then the day that I turned into the combination of a dreamer and a realist, that's when I started to really go. You know, and that's, that's saying like, don't be afraid to close your eyes and what's against you. So the level of greatness that you have to be to really be able to make a change and affect everything is, is you have to be greater than what they consider what's out there as great. So that means you have to work harder. And that's the reality. And that's, that's the world that we, we're growing up in. And the only way we can change it is by embracing that. So that mindset, that relentlessness, that craziness, that, that, that we don't have a lot of people that are proficient and, and masters of everything behind the scenes. And that's just a lie. It may not be in front of you, but you have a duty to look for it and to be conscious of the team I'm building around me am I also empowering my community. And I think that, that that's very, very important for the future of hip hop. And I think the culture right now, I think that we have to be able to, to evolve and to understand our power and to grow, to do something that has never been done before. I want to hear something I've never heard before. I want to hear a direction. I want to be cut to my soul. And if it ain't that, there's a, there's a place for some of that. But your responsibility as an artist is to push yourself to greatness and keep pushing and pushing and pushing. Well, you've led by example since your entree into the pop culture spectrum. We salute you. We appreciate you. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Mr. Howard. You can bow out. Sean. Yeah, yeah, my brother, my brother. First of all, y'all gotta offer them a drink. Of 